Hi, I'm Candace. I'm here with Toys R Us, and we are at Aven Animal Adventure Park here with April the Giraffe and her team of caretakers over here. <laughs> As you know, uh, my name is Jordan, and joining us is Alyssa, our zoologist, our head giraffe keeper, and Corey, one of our animal caretakers and the secondary giraffe keeper. And behind us, in the background, is of course April and her boyfriend Oliver, and a baby to be soon enough. And so, how do you think April's doing? You know, she's getting ready for for motherhood over here. You know. How do you think she's progressing at this point? Well, things are actually moving uh, a little bit better than expected today even. Just in a little bit of time here, we've had quite a bit of development. Uh, the vet just left, and we have noticed some udder filling, which is good, and also some back end swell that's increased significantly significantly from the past couple days. So uh, progression is there. We're getting, getting, getting closer. <laughs> and here she is making a cameo. <laughs> Hi, April. <laughs> and how do you think Oliver is, you know, progressing, getting ready for fatherhood? It's his first time being a dad. Oh, you can take that, Alyssa. <laughs> so really in the animal world, especially in giraffes, males, they hook up with the females, they produce that baby, and then they leave. So Oliver, Oliver really doesn't really care about what's going on. He is just in the mo mood to make another baby, so to speak. So he stays in his own space and uh, we'll do so until, you know, that baby is big enough and old enough to be able to share that with him. Yeah, everybody uh, would like to paint a picture of the giraffes playing house together, but it's just not natural. So sure, Oliver's reacted to the many changes in the environment, especially the smells and soon the sights once that calf lands. Uh, but otherwise, he's just being Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we have any questions over here. We have yes. a lot of people who are tuning in. Happy birthday. <laughs> Not a birthday yet. <laughs> if, if you have a question, uh, write it in right now. We'll try to answer for you live. It'll uh, actually give you a chance to ask some of those things we don't get to address. And we didn't go Facebook Live this week, so this is absolutely perfect right now. So what do we have? Let's see, we have someone saying hi from Scotland. Scotland. Scotland is tuning in. You know, we did a radio interview with Scotland right in the beginning of this whole phenomenon. And there was a radio DJ who said if we named the giraffe calf after him, he would get our logo tattooed somewhere on his body. I won't say where. So, uh, you know, Scotland, get your votes in for that name. <laughs> What do you think? Is does, does Jeffrey have a chance of uh, getting named over here? You know, Jeffrey is a little bit larger than life as it is. To have a Jeffrey Jr. to live in that shadow, I think this calf is going to have quite a big shadow of its own. We have a question here from Cindy. She said, how long are giraffes typ typically in labor, in active labor? I'll take this one. Uh, you know, giraffes naturally and instinctively um, they, they hide their labor because in the wild, uh, you really don't want every lion and hyena around sitting tight and waiting for mom and baby to become vulnerable in the birthing process. So we're not going to see a lot of the early labor, but once we see hooves, and that's like the magic you know, word here, hooves, when we see those hooves, that means we are having a baby. And within 30 to 60 minutes, we'll have a baby on the ground. And within 30 to 60 minutes from there, it'll be up on its feet and nursing. So uh, it's going to happen very quickly once we say, it's time. Now we have someone here, Yvonne is asking, who is larger, the male or female giraffe? Uh, Corey, do you want to take that one? Yeah, uh, April is what, about 14 feet tall, where mm -hmm. Oliver stands about 10 to 12. Yeah, and right now that's because Oliver is 10 years April's junior. Uh, you thought she was a giraffe, she's actually a cougar. Right? <laughs> uh, you know, so right now they're not proportionate, but as they mature, they get much larger. And Alyssa, how big does a male get? So your average male bull giraffe ends up being about 18 feet tall, so he's got quite a bit of growing to do. And to put it in perspective, the ceilings behind us and above us here, uh, they're at about 20 some odd feet. They was it was designed that way, so Oliver's head could be right up there, but his 16 to 18 inch uh, long tongue couldn't change the light bulbs for us. So it gives us some proportion. <laughs> of how big they're going to get. Great. Let's see. There's a question here. Are giraffes monogamous? Not at all. <laughs> Back to that playing house thing. No, so, no, no. So really what happens is a female, female, when you see a herd of giraffes, it's almost all females. And then you'll see about one to two male giraffes that live within that herd. They visit that herd, hit up every female that's ready to make a baby, and then they're out. Uh, and then it returns right back to that female herd. Yeah, there, uh, there are many terms for a father that disappears on their calves, but we won't say them here because we're going to keep it kid-friendly. It is Toys R Us. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, we have a question here. How long is April's neck? Oh, great question. Well, um, I would easily say, and we can get a shot right there, I'd say it's at least, what, six feet tall. You know, I'm just over six feet. Corey's taller than I am. 
Um, I would say if I was on her shoulders, I would be about head level with her, right, sweetheart? <laughs> I think so. So about six feet tall, or and six April's, feet long. April's calf is expected to be about six feet tall. Too, yeah, correct? to put that into perspective again further, uh, that calf that's going to be born here soon is going to be six feet tall. So again, that proportion is as long as her neck right now. It's a big animal. All right. Let's see here. People are asking, when when is that calf coming? I don't know. Should we tell them? Oh. Are you a millionaire? You want to know? <laughs> Soon. <laughs> All right. We have no timelines and no predictions that we can provide you anymore. Uh, our timeline window went out the window a long time ago. <laughs> and, you know, you have to understand, and anybody that's maybe tuning into this that's not fully aware of how we came up with that mid-January to mid-February birthing period, uh, it was based upon, hi, sweetheart, it was based upon our first witnessing of them copulating or mating. So that occurred in the uh, middle of October of 2015. So what that happens is we start counting 15 months ahead, 16 months ahead to give us our window of when we think we're going to have that baby. We have to be prepared in case they did conceive the first connection. As we all know in the natural world, you don't conceive every time. So it looks like our connection and conception occurred probably a month or two after our witnessed mating behavior started. So when is it going to happen? We don't know. But right now we're basing everything on physical development and behavioral changes. And like I said, the vet just left. Things are good. <laughs> We have a question here for Alyssa and Corey. We have someone asking what your favorite part is of caring for April. I think the whole, for me at least, the whole experience is pretty unique. You know, I never, growing up, I never thought I would be working with giraffes. I was always a predator girl. So working with giraffes, I think just getting to know them and be able to work around an animal that's, that's so distinct in the animal world is just, it's phenomenal. Um, and I think just the whole experience overall is just great to me. Yeah, Alyssa puts that a great way. Uh, I would have to say it the same. Um, at first, I was definitely afraid of holding. <laughs> it's overwhelming. He's exactly. right. Yeah, I mean, I'm tall, but add another six feet, and oh boy. But uh, April, she's such a sweetheart. I mean, you get in there, and it's great. I mean, we love it. And can I? Can, I'm going to pick somebody up right here because you kind of see us dancing around. <laughs> There's a reason. Now, up in our loft here, we have our tortoises. Oh, oh don't chew with your mouth full. Thank <laughs> you. So uh, something you don't see on the giraffe cam is that there's a, there are other sections of this barn, and one of those areas is the tortoise loft. Now, these are African spur thigh or sulcata tortoises. Every tortoise we have here at the park is a rescue. Uh, they've been surrendered to us by their owners, all loving owners, but they just can't keep them any longer because of their massive size. So they reside with us here at the park, and I believe our numbers were up to what, 13 is it? 14, 14 now? So we're up to 14 rescue tortoises that spend their winter in the loft where it's very warm and very toasty. I'm in short sleeves, I'm comfortable, right? <laughs> so we'll put him back down to mosey away. <laughs> We have some viewers here who are asking about the probability of giraffes having multiple. Is that a possibility? Ooh. Twins? Does that happen with giraffes? Twins have happened. Um, it is a very invasive thing for a female to have twins. Uh, just to carry a baby and develop one for 15 months anyway is a chore and a task for an animal. Uh, to have twins is even more of a strain on a mom. Does it happen? Yes, it's happened. Sometimes there are issues with the second baby, um, but they've been successfully raised before. By all means, do we think we're having twins? No. No. All right. We, we really don't want twins. We want a nice, easy, simple labor and a healthy calf. We have someone who was actually asking about the tortoises. They wanted to know what some of their names are. Corey, listen. Thank you. All right. Let's test Corey. Give us all 13 of them. All right. We've got Tiny Tim, Gizmo, Yordis the tortoise, uh, Jumbo, Yurtle, Myrtle, Myrtle, Hamilton, Hamilton, Little tortoise, no name. Little tortoise, that's right. And uh, what are we calling that new big guy? Godzilla. Godzilla, <laughs> Godzilla yeah. Uh, and I think we have three that came to us brand new at the end of last season that we haven't named yet. You haven't named that? Isn't there a Frank the Tank in here somewhere? Yeah. Yes. yeah. I think there's a Frank the Tank in here too. So I, I know we didn't name all 13, but there's definitely 13 here and a couple more actually up in the barn uh, that aren't Sulcata. So we have two uh, Russian tortoises that were also surrendered and a leopard tortoise too, which are very cool, unique uh, species also. So. So we have someone asking when they'll be able to visit April and her calf and Oliver. Well, our, our park opens back up to the public on May 13th, uh, as long as the snow melts sometime soon. So May 13th, we open back up, and uh, in a perfect scenario and everything, mom and baby will be available for our guests to meet. Now, all this time, we've been mentioning how mom, baby, and dad will likely not share space, especially not in May. The male can be a little too spunky for a baby. 
So what will happen is we're going to rotate our giraffes. There will be some in the yard, some back in the barn. However, we're going to make sure you have access to them in both environments because you as fans, we don't want you to miss out on uh, some of your favorite characters. And uh, these characters will be out there too. <laughs> <laughs> so we have someone asking if you know if April is having a boy or a girl. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Uh, so there's really no way to know. So the ultrasound that we have available as, to us right now isn't strong enough to get through a giraffe's epidermis. That skin is so thick because they are you know, susceptible to things like hyenas and lions in the wild. They have to be thick skinned, literally. So the ultrasound that we have uh, doesn't get through that epidermis. So the only way we're going to know if it's a boy or a girl is it's going to be born, uh, it's going to get up, we're going to lift that skirt and uh, see if it's a boy or a girl. That's right, and uh, you know, some people have asked us in email uh, inquiry is uh, how soon after can you tell if it's a male or a female? It can be within minutes, as soon as that giraffe calf starts to move around, we'll be able to get a little peek and uh, we're going to figure out a special way to announce to the world whether we have pink or we have blue. Very cool. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Man, no more questions? No, we have a few. Okay, are you a family-owned zoo? Uh, well, yeah, I guess you could say it's, it's, it's family-owned and operated. Uh, I opened the park uh, and built the park with the help of um, a team about four years ago. Uh, this is going to be our fifth season. Now, I, uh, I'm here just about every day running around the park. You'll see me everything from a cash register to jumping in with a hyena. Uh, and then my wife, uh, Colleen, actually handles our critter camp program in the summer. She's a school teacher uh, normally. And even my mother uh, works in the gift shop souvenir area. Uh, but this year, I think she's been asking for a promotion to carrot girl, as we call it. So <laughs> you might be able to see my mother uh, up on the giraffe deck. And uh, people know her here as Miss Vicky. And she's famous in her own right for that, yeah. <laughs> and, and not only is it family run, you know, it is run and owned by the Patch family, but here at the park we are very much like family. I refer to Corey often as he's like my younger brother, you know, we, we're all each other's family. The animals are our family, so it is pretty much a family operation. Yeah, many of our team members that are here have been here almost since the beginning. I, I believe Corey's going into his fourth yep. year, fourth yep. season with us, so, um, you know, in a perfect world we'd like to keep you guys as long as we can, <laughs> but, uh, you know, life happens, but... Let's keep the kids grow up. <laughs> yeah, kids grow up. <laughs> That's right. So we have someone asking if you're running a contest on the baby's name. Yes, we are going to run a naming contest. So what I'm going to tell you right now is don't submit your names yet. Uh, don't, don't waste sending an email to us. Don't even comment on Facebook about it. Just wait. What's going to happen is we want the world to have input on how this calf is going to be named. So we have, right now, our IT team is working on a voting system that you'll do on the computer. And what you're going to be able to do is pick a name of choice, so people have been suggesting the name Patches after our last name, for the baby. So say you like the name Patches, and you donate $1 for the name Patches, that's one vote. If you donate $100 for the name Patches, that's 100 votes. And what this program is going to do is kind of add everything up, and we're going to know the top five earning names, and then from there we'll go to one more round of voting. Now the neat thing about this is that the money that's going to be raised from this naming contest is going towards some great things. Uh, number one, we're going to be able to contribute further financial support to the Giraffe Conservation Foundation in Namibia, which is going to help preserve and conserve uh, giraffes in the wild. Our, our teaming up with Toys R Us has allowed us to give them a significant gift this past week, and we're going to only add to that total. Now another portion is going to go back to our giraffes here to maintain them here in our environment and give them further improvements and a giraffe yard cam and things like that to keep you guys in touch. And then the last is uh, for an event we hold here every year now called Ava's Little Heroes, which is after my daughter. Now this event each year is held uh, to, to develop and I guess earn financial um, support for families locally with children, children with unexpected medical issues. Last year we held this uh, event. And in its first year, we raised, I think it was $10,000 for one local family. So I think with the world supporting us this year, we're going to be able to help a lot of families for a much longer time. That's great. Yeah. So we have someone asking, what do baby calves normally eat? Milk. Milk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just like any other mammal in the world. Uh, well, except for a couple. Uh, when, they, when, they, when they come out, they're going to drink milk. And that baby uh, is really going to rely on mom's uh, milk production, her lactation, for quite some period of time. But relatively quickly, she's going to start nibbling on hay. They're very curious animals. That's one thing I think we've all learned watching Oliver in April. But the baby's not going to be able to sustain itself on any kind of um, uh, browse or hay anytime soon. It's going to, the weaning process can take as short as 6 to 10 months, some people have reported, but it's, or as long as 14 to 15 months. So there's going to be some time here relying on mom. 
So we have some people asking your personal predictions on when you think April's baby might be coming. What do you think? <laughs> Let's go right down the line. Corey, what do you think? <laughs> well, 4th of July. 4th of July! <laughs> Alyssa? Uh, sometime before next Christmas. <laughs> I would say by Tuesday. Yeah, you Ooh, said that earlier, but I think it's I know. Be longer. And, but let me, that comes with a warning, I've been wrong. Plenty oh, of times. So many times. Plenty of times. So, yeah, so don't, yes. don't take my prediction on this one. <laughs> and how much does April weigh, and how tall is she? Okay, that's a neat question, because a lot of people ask, uh, how, do you, how do you weigh a giraffe? Well, number one, our giraffes are target trained. We had a behaviorist that worked with them initially when they came here, and we kind of reinforce that behavior now on and off, so that they will go to a location and stand there and stand on point. So we can put a large scale system in that can get a very accurate read. But with a lot of your larger mammals, and in the horse world they do this quite often, you, you kind of gauge it on confirmation, the body type and um, you know how the body's carried, whether there are fat deposits and fat rolls, or you can see hip bones and things like that. Right now, April is scoring somewhere around the 2,000 pound mark, so about, about a ton. Um, what I can tell you is she is overweight, but that's okay, she's a pregnant mom. Oliver, uh, uh, definitely overweight. Definitely <laughs> overweight right now. Um, so we. This just the dad pounds. It's a sympathy weight. I can relate. I can, I can relate. You, you gain weight in a pregnancy. Trust me. So um, you know, our our female is about a ton. Oliver right now, I'd probably put him somewhere at about 1,600 pounds, probably in there, 1,400 pounds. Uh, but again, he can achieve somewhere up of 2,700 pounds. A bull elephant, a bull <laughs> giraffe is big. Will the calf reside at your zoo permanently? Okay, that's been a great question. I'm glad we're addressing it. Is that the calf will not stay here for, forever. It, it just can't. Now, the whole purpose of what we're doing here is the preservation of the species. And that is maintaining them in the captive management programs throughout the country. Many people don't know the conservation need that giraffes have right now. Uh, for example, they have declined, what, 30 to 40 percent? 40 percent in the last 30 years. 40 percent of the population has disappeared in the past 30 years of giraffes in the wild. We all know about the, 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 bl the plight of, of rhinoceros and elephants. There's elephants. I knew it was coming. <laughs> um, but very few people understand that there are four times as many elephants as there are giraffes in the wild. That's how scary these numbers are getting. So if anything, this calf is going to be raised up here and when comfortable, when we find the right location and the right program to send the calf to, it will move on to another program. If we retain that calf, it's a waste of the production of that animal because it cannot breed back to mom. It cannot breed to dad. It cannot produce offspring if it stays. Our facility, we have beautiful accommodations, but we aren't uh, set up to have multiple herds on site. Other facilities, bigger animal parks and zoos, they can do that. It's just something, something we can't do. So uh, calf will stay as long as it would like, and when the time is right, it'll move on and start its own family and play its own role in conservation. Now we have a lot of people asking here. Obviously, you have millions of people tuning in around the world to check out April and Oliver. For those who aren't tuning in the exact moment that this birth should start, will you be alerting people on Facebook or social media to let them know that it has begun? What's going to happen, more or less, is that um, with the hundred some thousand people that are watching at a given time, you got to imagine every one of them is going to announce it on their social media platforms. So um, almost like reminiscent of a, a viral zombie spread in a movie here. <laughs> the world's going to find out pretty quickly. What we're going to do on our end to make sure you're informed is, of course, we're going to go Facebook Live to let everybody know what's happening. So all of our Facebook followers are going to get a notification that we went live. And if we go live at like 2 in the morning, tune in because there's a reason <laughs> for that. Um, but also, uh, you know, on the YouTube, I think when people see activity occurring in the barn and so forth, they're going to know something is up. And ideally, we want to catch this before the hooves are waving hello. So we'll be up here a little bit before that. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. A lot of people are surprised by how much April weighs. You know, she is expecting. But um, let's see here. And I, I, I think it's uh, a little bit of an illusion, too. People don't understand just how large uh, these guys are. Their stall walls are 10 feet tall, for comparison right there. Uh, we're standing somewhere, I think it's, we're, we're 10 feet on the off the ground, the railing behind us is 13, 14 feet there, uh, so that puts me at, like, I'm at about, what, uh, 16, feet, 16 tall. feet tall right now, and the girl comes by and she stands right about here, so uh, they're big, they're much bigger than people think, yeah. And for those who want to keep tuning in to April and her calf, do you know how long the, the cam might stay up? Well, People just have to come here and see April for herself. You guys know the new number? No, what's the new number? New number? Um, it's going to stay up about five days post delivery. 
And the reason for that is we don't want to just, uh, as I called it in another interview, a Truman Show blackout. We don't want that to happen. We don't want to leave the world hanging. You've been supporting us and following us this whole time. So we'll leave it up for five days. And then after that, we are going to take it down. We need to really focus on opening up the park and taking care of all the other business that comes with opening up the park for May. So um, how will we stay in contact? Because I think that's the next question that'll come up is that at minimum, we will at least go live one or two times a week to show you baby, to show you mom, to show you growth, to show you development and to keep you in the loop. And once we open and we start breathing again and, and getting back into our routine, uh, there's gonna be more cams. Get ready for squirrel monkey cams and koala monkey cams and wolf cams. Uh, we want you in touch with us. It, it, it's, it's there. People want to see what's going on in Animal Adventure, and we want to share it with you. Someone's asking for Alyssa if you feel the hooves when you touch April's baby at this point. Uh, so I'm not really sure what I'm feeling at this <laughs> point. There's really, there's really no way to, to really know. Like I said, we can't get an ultrasound on there. Um, we don't know how far along, just how far along she is in her pregnancy. You don't know how that calf is sitting. I can tell you that when I poke on those hard parts, it's something hard. So it's a joint, it's a hoof, maybe it's the top of their head. So it's not like I'm poking their stomach. I am poking, you know, a, a hardened appendage in there. And I do feel that quite often. And, you know, people ask, I was asked last night, actually, I was on the live chat that we have on our YouTube channel. And they asked, you know, do you ever get kicked? And I go, apps, I, you know, I put my hands on that baby and I get kicked in the hands. And I have gotten kicked in the face before because I put my face right up there. So uh, there, there's already no respect. We'll see how that how, how it goes when that baby's born. And this is a good question for all of you. Someone's asking if, if April is to go into labor at night, is there someone here with her yeah. during uh, that time? At all times, we have somebody on site. Um, now, because they're on site doesn't mean they're up watching the cam. That person is here to be that first line of defense for whoever is watching at home. I know that I'm up personally at about 3 a.m. every morning and I'm watching the cam and then I usually shut back down at about 6 a.m. because I know the staff is on their way and the person on site is getting up. So there's always somebody on watch and there's always somebody on property here uh, to, to act quickly. In the event we get a quick hello from those hooves, the first thing that you're going to see is a keeper come into this area and they're going to, hi honey, <laughs> hi big girl, they're going to get in there and they're going to bed down the stall. Uh, right now, you know, a lot of people ask like, oh my gosh, you know, that poor baby's going to fall six feet onto that ground. Well, it's already padded. There's rubber mats down, there's bedding down, but you're going to see our team come in and add a few more inches of bedding to mitigate that drop a little bit more. And from there, you'll start seeing people arrive. Dr. Tim will arrive, the curator will arrive, uh, myself, and, and, and whoever else needs to be on site. And uh, then get ready. Sit down, buckle up. Yeah. And even if we are home, you know, I can show you my cell phone call log, and it's Corey and I calling each other at 2 o'clock in the morning saying, hey, are you watching the camera? Or text from Jordan, hey, are you watching the camera? Yes, I am. What are you seeing? What am I seeing? Uh, so it's, it's someone always has eyes on her. And, and I'm glad she mentions that only because, uh, you know, when, when you think you see something, don't worry, we saw it too, all right? So don't, don't, you don't have to tell us, we think something's going on, we got it too. So those texts have already been sent to one another. Yeah. Great. So I think, um, I think that covers it for today. It's Friday night, it's gotta be darn near happy hour, all right? <laughs> so um, we're gonna go ahead and get out of the barn. We're gonna give Oliver and April some peace and quiet, let them relax, and hopefully uh, this weekend, maybe we will have a calf join us. And if not, keep on watching, stay tuned, and uh, soon enough we'll all share in this awesome celebration. Great, well thank you so much.